Hey, y'all, how are you? It's Dr. Sand. Uh, no snap today, but we got to keep the train rolling. And this is Damn the Cat podcast. So today we got a lot of things going on that I want to talk about. And our subject is why do people cheat? And, you know, this has been a big discussion that we've had lately um, just amongst me and my friends. And, you know, I just want to give you my perspective on it, on thinking about why people cheat. So one thing that people think about when they cheat are um, a number of things. But the first thing that always comes to me as a question is, why do you think people cheat? And one reason why is sexual variety. And it's not what you're thinking, but it's not necessarily that they're craving to go to other people. But It's just boring in the bedroom. What are you doing to make it exciting? What are you doing new to enhance it? What are you bringing into it? Um, Are you looking at anything in particular? Are you doing anything in particular? You know, the same old same thing gets very stale and very boring. So some of the things that you can do are, you know, talk with your partner to see you know maybe their interest has changed. Maybe they want to try something new. Maybe they want to do something new. That's fine, too. But um, one thing I will always say is consider what your partner is telling you. They may be telling you something indirectly, you know, especially, you know, if you're closed off and you feel like you're um, not wanting to try something different. Always listen to what your partner has to say and you'll understand where they're coming from. You know, maybe they want a little bit of variety or excitement. You know, what what are things that you can do to change that? Um, you know, you can go to your local sex toy store. Or if you're too embarrassed for that, go online. Um, look and see, you know, what are some things that are common that you like together. You know, um, maybe it's something as small as a, a vibrating toy. Maybe it's a, a device or an aid that helps you, you know, like a pillow or a wedge to help you get in different positions, especially if you're over 50 and shameless plug, um, fucking after 50 is available now on Amazon if you're interested. But, you know, some of the things that I tell you in there are if you have um, mobility issues and that, you know, that can happen a lot. You know, you're unable to do certain positions, certain movements, certain things like that. And you need devices like wedge pillows or maybe straps or something like that. Look into that. Maybe that can help change up the routine a little bit. Um, Maybe go somewhere different, you know. Somewhere different like a hotel, it doesn't even have to be anything really major. It can be a different room in your house, actually, just to change it up a little bit. So when it comes to that part, listen to the variety that your partner needs. And maybe you need it, too, and you're just not willing to submit to it. So see if you have a different thing that, you know, you want to try and bring it to your partner. Maybe it's something that y'all can, you know, discover together. So think about that as you think, too. Um, Another reason why somebody may cheat is because, unfortunately, they're not in love with you anymore. And I know that may be a hard pill to swallow sometimes, and especially hearing that from, you know, someone that you care for and you love. But, you know, sometimes things run their course. And I know I'm the love doctor and I'm supposed to be trying to fix and help everybody. But sometimes relationships do fall by the wayside. Maybe it's because of maintenance. Maybe it's because of attitudes. Maybe it's because of, you know, past transgressions that have happened and not necessarily cheating. But, you know, there's family issues, there's health issues and that can take a toll on a relationship as well. So, you know, maybe you know, it was some of those things and it just got to be too much for your partner. And they realized, hey, I love this person, but I'm not in love with this person. And their feelings have changed. So that might be something too that you may want to investigate. You know, um, nobody wants to feel unwanted, of course, but sometimes it's a necessity that you end up relationship for 
for the good of you and the other person because, you know, then it becomes a toxic relationship. And we know how toxic relationships become. You know, there can be arguing, there can be fighting, and and unfortunately it can escalate to even more things. So we want to make sure that we want to end toxic relationships and, and bad relationships as well, even though they may not be in love with you. You know, find a way to maybe get some help through the situation, uh, you know, find a, an outlet. And when you do in the relationship, try to work on yourself. You know, don't worry about, you know, what did I do wrong or what went wrong or something like that. Those are always questions that you might want to put in the back of your mind so that you can work on that for yourself, though. Um, you know, don't come to the other person with that like that. Um, it can only make the situation worse sometimes. So when you come out of that relationship, if you do, unfortunately, you know, try to work on yourself to make yourself a better person and you'll feel a lot better about it. Uh, something else that you can do is when you're coming out of a relationship, make sure that you're working on being a better person for others as well as yourself. Uh, it may be that nasty attitude that you may have. You know, we have things about us that we don't necessarily like or necessarily love. And we know those are things that we may need to change within ourselves, but we don't do it. So now when you're out of this relationship, that's a perfect time to work on it. Whether you have to do shadow work whether you need to go to a therapist and talk about um, things that happened in the past, or if you just need, you know, good old fashioned, just fun in your life to get your yourself back to where you were, do those things to make yourself worthy and feel better again. Uh, speaking of toxic relationships, that's another thing. You are in a toxic relationship and it's been toxic from the beginning. You know, it may have been, you know, somebody telling you where you needed to be, what you need to do, how you need to do it. And at first, you know, you were like, oh, they were really taking an interest in me. But soon you come to find out that they're trying to be very controlling of your life. They're trying to instill everything that they want you to be that you're not to them. Um, it may be something as fact that, you know, they're trying to make you into something that they want only for them and not for yourself. So you have to see about toxic relationships and how they start. Uh, something about a toxic relationship that you need to do in the very beginning of any relationship as a test is to see, you know, are your boundaries or are your guidelines being crossed? You know, you need to come in with what is acceptable for you. Anybody who knows me knows I'm always talking about boundaries and, you know, non-negotiables. Non-negotiables are very important when it comes to a relationship. So if you let your non-negotiables go, if you let your boundaries go, that can form a toxic relationship very, very fast. So we want to make sure that we're not entering into a toxic relationship or upholding a toxic relationship because that can form into something bigger and again that can also lead to cheating as well because there's no boundaries in a relationship there's no nothing telling them okay what you expect out of them or what you want for them and vice versa so make sure whenever we're going into a relationship especially in the beginning that we have those boundaries and those non-negotiables down because it's very important from the start to make sure that you know what you're trying to do and where you're trying to move with your relationship. Uh, something else that may lead to cheating that we never really would have thought is low self-esteem. You know, I was just telling the story about someone that I knew that um, told me that they were cheating because they 
you know, didn't get attention in high school or they was not popular, you know, early on in life. And now that they're in a position, they're getting all these people coming towards them and, you know, all these offers, they don't have self-control and don't know how to say no. So, you know, we want to make sure that our self-esteem is in check. We want to make sure that we, you know, love ourselves. We're, we're doing our self-care. We're doing our self-love and our self-trust and our self-worth. You know, we want to make sure that those are important to us in and out of relationships. You know, we, we tend to lose ourselves sometimes. And when we lose ourselves, we lose a lot of our self-esteem, self-worth, self-love, all of those things. So we want to make sure that we keep them cohesive with us at all times. Um, what does self-love look like? Well, making sure we're taking care of our health. And we're not talking physical health. We're talking um, mental health, too. You know, it, it's very important that we take care of our mental health. You know, those daily stressors, that that work life, that family life, that everything that encompasses that we need to make sure that we decompress from the world sometimes. And that can be very trying, but it's something that needs to be done. So we want to make sure that that is something that we do to garner up our our love of ourselves um you know we want to take those trips we want to make sure that we do those little little spoils for ourselves to make ourselves feel good and not only that it's productive because once you feel good you're spreading love and and positivity to other and to others and it's going to be fine because you have enough to give you know, it's not like you're giving from an empty cup. So we want to make sure that we take care of ourselves and our self-love and our self-worth. If you feel like you have a problem with your self-love or self-worth, you know, try to uh, evaluate why. You know, are you overly stressed? Um, is there a lot of things going on that you don't know how to get a handle on? Um, is there, you know, unfortunately, we do have uh, extreme emotional problems with the world today. So, you know, is it something that you need to go speak to a professional about, you know, to try to balance out your life? A lot of times I, I hear women and men, unfortunately, say, you know, well, I just don't have time for self-love or self-care or anything like that because I have kids, I have work, I have this. But you have to make it a priority. So make sure that we do that so we have our self-esteem. Once our self-esteem is high, then we ha make better decisions. You know, things that we know that may not necessarily be right for us, but they're right for the relationship. And what that means is we have self-control. So, you know, if you do have those feelings, maybe it's something deeper than just your self-love or your self-worth or your self-esteem. Talk to your partner, you know, make sure that we're getting our feelings out. Maybe it's something that needs to change. Maybe you need more time for yourself. Maybe you need more time, you know, without the kids or without work or things like that. So make sure that you talk to your partner so we can get a balance on what your life is like and what needs to be assessed. Okay. I know it seems like a lot of information and that's okay. You can always come back and rewatch it. But something else that, you know, a reason why somebody may cheat is they just want to and you know it just seems like what do you mean they just want to it it's appealing to them they get a rush out of it they like the adrenaline that they get from it you know it's a charged feeling it's something that is taboo and sneaky and they don't you know it's something that people tell you that you're not supposed to do and you get a rush from doing it because you're doing something that somebody quote unquote doesn't know about. So how do we harvest that feeling and not cheat? Do something new and different with your partner and partners. Like I said, at the beginning, when you have your mate come to you and want to try something new or do something new, listen to them because they're telling you what they need. And a lot of times as a partner, you want to shun what they need. But if it's something that you need, you want your partner to listen to you. 
So that is something that you want to do. You want to go back and listen to what they're needing, what they're wanting, and try to come up with a decision on how you can balance it out. It may not be easy. It may not be doable. But maybe you can make something that is different and new for you, but not to the extreme that your partner wants. So, again, you know, try to give them that adrenaline rush or, you know, that that feeling of you know, that they want of the excitement of something new and something di- different. But try to do it in a different way that's conducive to y'all. Okay. So I got a couple more. Um, Another reason why people may cheat is because it's convenient. And we just had a discussion about that. Shout out to Lack. Um, We just had a conversation. It was just convenient. You know, um, somebody was there. They were available. They were willing. And you just did it. Now, there's a couple of things that go along with that. Uh, again, that goes with impulsiveness and the rush that may come with it. Or it can be just, you know, we, we just want to do it because we just want to do it. And I know that doesn't make sense, but sometimes we have things in our life where we just decide that we're going to do it and we're going to do it. Uh, maybe it's something that they've never done before and they wanted to see what the feeling was going to be like. Maybe it's the fact that, you know, they're angry about something or they're resenting something and that's very important too when it comes to your relationships if people hold resentment about something or something that was done or said it can lead to resentment and that resentment can it's like a scar you know it can just build and build and build until something like this happens so we want to watch out with resentment um, if you start feeling resentment towards your partner, get some help. You know, let's talk about it. Let's see it, what we can do to work that out and how we can do that. It's very important that, you know, we get great communication in any of these um scenarios that I've been talking about today is because that's the only way that you're going to a you're going to be able to work out anything is with communication and when a partner cheats it's very difficult I understand that I know that firsthand and you may not always want to talk to your partner and I get that you know you deserve all the time that you need to get yourself together But I will say this, the longer that you go without talking about it or addressing the situation, the harder it's going to be for you to resolve the situation because then it becomes, oh, well, maybe they just accept it. Or maybe it's, you know, well, they don't care what I do. She hasn't said anything, you know, whether she cares or she doesn't, I don't know, maybe the silent treatment is just her way of saying that she doesn't want to deal with it. That can be the case also. So we want to make sure that we have that communication. Try to talk about the situation within the first 24 hours. Uh, If you do need a mediator, try to find a mediator that's somebody that is impartial. And uh, I will always recommend a professional to do that. Uh, We really don't want a lot of different sides to the scenario especially since it's something between you and your partner you want to make somebody make sure that it's somebody that is kind of neutral to the situation that can hear both parts equally and be fair and give you advice or um, information that will you know either strengthen your bond make you think uh, other things about your bond or tell you ways that you need to repair your bond. So make sure that you go to someone that is a professional and that can, you know, try to balance out everything. So when we go through all these things and we figure out that our partner is cheating on us, we feel a lot of emotions. You know, we feel the hurt, the betrayal, um, the you know, the lying, the trust factors, all those things. So when it comes to that, you have to realize that a lot of sides are being dealt with at this time. 
So one thing that we want to do is we want to make sure that we take that break and think about all the things that you want in the relationship fixed. And I will always say this. um, One of my things about fighting fair is if you come with a problem, make sure that you come with a solution as well. Now, that doesn't mean that your partner is going to accept your solution, but what it does mean is that they're going to get a starting point on where to think and how you're thinking. Um, something as small as the dishes. I'm just using this as an example so you understand what I'm saying. Say, you know, you're tired of doing the dishes every day. Okay, so you're tired of doing the dishes every day. What would be a help for you? You can't just say, well, I need somebody to help me with the dishes. Okay, so that's fine. Do you want somebody to wash them? Do you want somebody to dry them? Do you want somebody to wash and dry them on different days? Do you want, you know, somebody to be there with you and you switch up every so often? We don't know. You can't just leave a question out there and no solution for it. So make sure that you try to come with a solution with the problem. You know, um, that's fair to everybody that's involved because that gives you a starting point on where to talk Uh, like I said your partner may not necessarily agree with what your counter offer is but you know maybe they'll say hey you know I understand what's going on I can give you three days out the week is that enough you can say no you can say yes or you can say well can you do it seven days a week and um, dry the dishes and put them up that you know that's something maybe you say no yes that's whatever but again you have a a chance of a dialogue at that point so remember if you're coming with a problem also try to come with a solution all right um another thing when it comes to you know healing from cheating and you know all the things that go with it you have to understand that trust is going to have to be built again and this is for everybody. You, uh, If the partner that, you know, supposedly got cheated on feels like that their trust is broken. And the person that actually may have done the cheating has to understand that their partner's trust is broken. It's not going to be a quick fix. It's not going to be an easy fix. It may be something like, okay, well, I need to read your messages for, you know, for a month or I need access to your phone or I need to know your location on your phone. Those things can help build trust. And the person that cheated, especially if you're trying to work on the relationship, You have to understand that this is what this person needs at the moment. And if you're trying to reestablish that uh, relationship with them, you're going to have to conform, uh, conform to some of the things that they need from you. And at this point, I'm not saying that your life has to immediately stop and revolve around the other person. But you're going to have to understand that to get that trust factor back, you're going to have to kind of play on their court for a little bit to understand where their mindset is and understand how they're feeling and understand that, okay, I did mess up and I have to come back to the good graces, so to say, of that person. And that's something else that uh, people need to understand when they do cheat. You have to own up to it. You know, you you can't just push it off or gaslight it or anything like that. You have to own up to it and not only that you have to talk about the reason why it's not fair that this person finds out that you know you broke their trust but you need to tell them why you broke their trust and I know that seems difficult and I know it may seem hard but you have to come to that person and tell them what's going on You have to let them know, hey, you know, I'm not feeling loved. I'm not feeling wanted. I'm, you know, I needed diversity in the bedroom. I needed, uh, you know, a self-esteem push. I needed whatever you were doing it for. That is why you need to talk to them and let them know what's going on so you can fix it together. If it is fixable together, you know, I did give you the the scenario that the person is out of love with you and that may be their way of trying to end the relationship, you know, even though they were not, um, you know, willing to come to you and talk to you 
as a person and say, hey, you know, this relationship is not what I need or what I want. They did other actions to try to end it. So maybe it's to the point where you need to understand that, hey, you know, this relationship is not going to be, re, you know, revisited. And, you know, we need to find out how we're going to exit it. So, you know, that may involve kids, it may involve marriage, maybe, you know, you live together and you're splitting things. Yes, that can be a difficult time. I understand that. But the the quicker that you figure out what the reason is and whether you're going to fix it or not fix it, it allows everybody to get on with their life. And that's one thing that people need to understand too when it comes to cheating and when the other partner finds out it puts a lot of things on hold and that gray space either going forward or going backwards can be difficult for everybody that's involved and so we want to make sure that we resolve that as fast as possible so again um, I hope these tips helped you. I hope that, you know, you were able to get a flow for them. And, you know, if you have any questions, please feel free to contact me. Um, my social media, if you want to follow me, is Cassandra M. Parks on Instagram. Um, come find me at Let's Learn Love. Um, that's my company. That's here in the metro Atlanta area. And, you know, that's uh, Let's Learn Love and Facebook. Instagram, everything that you can possibly find. So until then, I am Dr. San. If, if you have any other questions, like I said, please feel free to contact me. Hopefully next week or the next two weeks, we'll get back to normal. If not, you know, things happen. So we'll get back to you soon. So until next week, we'll see you.